Hello everyone, it's Paul Williams. Happy Black Music Month. And while we're at it, Happy Pride Month too. As the world opens up, people embrace each other once again and hearts soar ever higher. We have so much to be thankful for and to celebrate. Especially you, our beautiful and diverse family of ASCAP members from rap, hip hop, and soul, to gospel, R&B, and everything in between, you created the music that united, inspired, and carried us through this past year. You also showed the world that it is not the color of our skin, or the category of our gender, but the content of our soul. And when you take what's inside your unique voice, your passion, your creative gifts and boundless spirit, and share it in your music, you not only move people, you change history. That's cause for celebration. So starting today, we're thrilled to honor our top songwriters, composers, and music publishers of the last year at the 2021 ASCAP Rhythm and Soul Music Awards. Follow at ASCAP and at ASCAP Urban on Instagram, where we invite your friends and family from all over the world to join in and celebrate your success. Now to kick things off, we want to present the ASCAP Voice of the Culture Award to three fantastic songwriter producers, Swizz Beats, Timbaland, and D Nice. The award honors them for using their immense creative gifts, innovation, and the power of their platforms to impact the culture in a positive way. This will be followed by a special ASCAP experience event featuring all three of these beat making humanitarians discussing how they united the world through music and sharing valuable insights and advice along the way. To help us do that, please welcome ASCAP's incredible Senior Vice President of Membership, Nicole George Middleton. Take it away, Nicole. It's all yours. Thank you, Paul. And welcome everyone to this momentous occasion. In the early days of the pandemic in 2020, hit makers Swiss Beats and Timbaland sprang into creative action. They joined forces and created the wildly popular verses which presented virtual music battles between music legends. Versus paired Gladys Knight with Patti LaBelle, Erica Badu with Jill Scott, Earth, Wind and Fire with the Isley Brothers, Neo with Jonte Austin, Snoop Dogg with DMX, and many, many more. The series generated joy and excitement when we needed it the most. It also celebrated music creators and the enduring power of their legacies. In an equally vital fashion, legendary DJ and artist D-Nice brought the party into our homes with Club Quarantine. His beloved Instagram Live series of perfectly curated sets of funk, disco, hip hop, and R&B. It was a blast of pure joy. The club overflowed with energy and surprises and attracted everyone from Rihanna to President Joe Biden. Now, I'd like everyone to join me in welcoming our very special honorees, Swizz Beats, Timbaland, and D-Nice. Swizz, D, and Tim, you are more than music legends. You are humanitarians dedicated to lifting us up through the power of music. We will never forget how you use that power for good during the darkest hours of the past year. You not only made a positive impact on our culture, you made a lasting impact on our soul. For that, we will forever be grateful. So it is my great honor to present to you Swizz, Timbaland, and D Nice, the 2021 ASCAP Voice of the Culture Award. <laughs> <laughs> it's an honor to receive this award. You know, I've been an ASCAP member forever, you know, decades. And, um, you know, during, uh, during the beginning of the pandemic, you know, I didn't do this for notoriety. It was really about playing music to save lives and to keep people mm. smiling and keep people dancing together. So this just represents um, that this mission has been accomplished, you know, of like, I know what we did together. We, we, um, we celebrated our culture. We kept people dancing and it's truly an honor to share this award with, with Swizz and Tim, man. Two of my idols, man. Love these guys. So thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, thank you. King. Congratulations. 
Swiss, I'm gonna hold the war. You speak. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! First I and spoke, foremost, so. congratulations, congratulations uh, to our brother D Nice for yes. getting us through so many times. You know, some people watch verses to get away. We watch D Nice to get away. Yes. You know, because yes. we're so hands on with verses and. You know, when, when me and Tim get finished, you start up and we go right to your party and you've seen us in there many times. And so we commend you for uh, bringing good music back, not just bringing music back, but bringing good music back. And that's what's very important. And um, I'm just super, super humbled um, because me and Tim started in our car in his basement and, you know, to get this amazing award with ASCAP, I'm happy to be back home um, it's been a long time and we're just super grateful. You know, we're, we're super grateful. I, I usually talk a lot, but I want, uh, you know, Tim is holding the trophy in his hand. So um, I, want, I, want, I want him and he got his hair cut today too. So he, I want him to talk. <laughs> oh, I thought you tried to give me back want me to keep holding. <laughs> no, you said it. You said a mouthful. You said everything. And like I said earlier, this is an honor. I'm a ASCAP. This is my family. We've, we we rock for life. Uh, yes, it's just an honor that the culture received us the way they did, mm. and, and I think that can never be, you know, that I, that's just like a blessing for the the culture just to receive us and this receive yes. what me and Swiss was doing and for for them to love us the way they did. And I just want to get this award to the culture. I think this is for the culture, not for me. That's a fact. I think this is for the yes. culture. So thank yes. you. <laughs> that boy good. That boy, go ahead <laughs> on, bro. <laughs> now, stick around for our ASCAP experience conversation with these three incredible music creators right after this. Thanks again, gentlemen, for joining us today at the ASCAP experience to share some of your stories, wisdom, and advice with us. Let's jump right in. Last spring, we found ourselves thrust into the middle of a global pandemic, which seemed to arrive out of nowhere and completely rock our world. Take me back to the middle of March, 2020. Where were you when the world went on lockdown? So um, I could start with that one. Um, I had just finished a series of events. So I played, um, I had opened for Jill Scott at Radio City. The next morning I flew to Trinidad, was there for like 10 hours, played in Trinidad for an event. And came back and flew to LA the next morning, played the Image Awards. I had like this run of gigs and I decided to leave home and visit my daughter. I left all of my gear. I didn't want to even think about music. I just wanted family time. And I started to pay attention to what was going on. So I didn't want to get stuck because California was the first place being shut down. And I didn't want to get stuck somewhere and not have access to my, 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 my music. So I flew back to LA. And that's when everything shut down. They were canceling flights. So I was stuck at home with no food. I wasn't with friends, you know, gigs were being canceled. And that is truly the reason why I started playing music online on, on uh, Instagram Live was because I needed to find a way to stay connected during like this, un this time of uncertainty. Um, and, and that's the beginning of it for me. Tim and Swiss. I love you that. Want me to no one wants to go first. <laughs> never, never. Oh, well, I could well, mine well. was simple. Mine was simple. Um, I had um I was really when um when before the pandemic started, I was uh doing like like some appearances. I did some I had di just did a fashion show with Missy and um a Philip Fl Flan and the, the virus has just gotten there and we was leaving, you know. Um, um, Italy at that time when the virus had just got gotten there, and um, and I was in the process of, of moving to at the same time, so it, it was it was a little bit surreal because <laughs> I was going to a concert. I had to go Romeo um, Santos concert. I had to go to a concert because we was about to start working together, and I was like, it's like, oh, that concert's going to get canceled because of this virus. Or I was like, what? That don't even sound right. Next thing you know, on the TV. The purge sound. <laughs> That's serious. Real. Well, weirdly and strangely, um, I was right where I'm at now when it happened. I was in the Middle East, and um, I kept 
seeing the news, I seen uh, the news happening from Italy. And um, it was some people that had family members that were around me that's from Italy. And they was reporting that, no, this is serious, serious. And I was just like, wait a minute. And I remember leaving out like just in time, like soon as I landed back in America, they shut they shut everything down. Like I made it literally by, like if I didn't leave that day, I would have been over here like for months and months and months um, away from my family. So luckily I was able to get back home and, and, and be close to my loved ones. And I went to New York, um, picked up uh, my middle son, KJ. And then we all just uh, resided at the crib and just to see what was next. So verses in Club Quarantine were of course entertaining, but they were so much more than just another live stream. What were you initially hoping to achieve with verses in Club Quarantine, initially? Well, for Versus, um, it was just me and Swiss, I'm just, we, we, we live on lockdown. And it was just me just getting at him because we started something way before. And we started this versus me and him before. And um, we already, we started communicating more because quarantine had us like talking to people that, you know, had us communicating. The love was already flowing. So I was like, let's go at it. Let's do it. Let's do this. And I started antagonizing him. He started antagonizing me. It wasn't about, oh, we going to do this and a bunch of people going to watch. We were just like, let's just battle now. See what the people say. See if they come on and rock with us. Mm. Yeah. So for for me it was uh you know I I had heard about Instagram live. I was never really using it, you know, and uh the night that we were going to full quarantine, full stay at home was uh was issued. I started calling up my friends and and this is how crazy it is. I called Big Daddy Kane. I was calling all these cats up. I was like I want to go on Instagram live and just interview you because no one was really doing that then. And I couldn't get one of my guys to go live with me. So, which is why, because they were like, ah, that just sounds stupid. I don't want to do that. Even Dougie Fresh, he was like, ah, I don't want to do that. So I started, I started playing music and instead of interviewing the artist, I was, I was just playing songs and telling stories about the moment that I heard that song. So it was like the first time that I heard this Dougie Fresh record, I was in the rooftop, uptown, you know, New York City, and the vibe was like, blah, blah, blah. And then I would play like the original sample because initially it was called Homeschool. And, you know, I, it wasn't club quarantine until mm. like the third day. It was me like trying to educate people on the music and, and the well, vibe homeschool. Yeah. And, and the clubs, you know what I mean? Like, and then, and, and uh, so it was really, it started out with me just wanting to do that. It had nothing to do with a party. But every day I watched the numbers go up. And one day I called DJ Clark Kent. This was day four. And I said, bro, like this is day three, actually. I said, bro, there's something magical happening. And it actually feels like I'm in a club and I'm by myself. And Clark said, you should actually DJ. And this is what's crazy. I don't want to take up all the time. I didn't even have DJ gear set up. I went and I, I hooked up my turntables. The mixer didn't work with like the new software. So I rushed over to Guitar Center. I got there within 30 minutes before they closed. 30 minutes. Came back home with a controller, connect the controller, and started DJing. Had I gone there 30 minutes later, I wouldn't, none of this would have happened for me. You know what I mean? Like, so it's, it was all divine. I had Clark Kent, mm -hmm. I said DJ, I wouldn't have been DJing. Had I not made it to Guitar Center, I would not have had the ability to play music. Everything would, would have been shut down. So I don't know, man. It's Ooh, you know, I see divine. what you mean, you know what I'm saying? Like to to, I was supposed to be in a position to do this to keep people happy. We needed verses to bring so many people together to keep people happy during this time. Yeah. Okay. So the three of you talked to me about the beginning, but now tell me about the moment when you realized that you were creating a movement that was having an impact not only on our culture but on the world. Like, what was that moment when you realized, wow, this is bigger than just what we set out to do? For me, I think it was when I seen uh, in the comments, world leaders, um, you know, the biggest people in the game. But the thing that I loved about it was that they were in there, you know, with the everyday people as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so that felt like very special that all of these big names and icons didn't even care that they was in the mix with the people, you know, it wasn't no VIP section. 
everybody was very important in that section. And when I seen that world coming together, you know, me and Tim was like, oh, this is serious. And um, and when we seen those numbers going up too. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna stick to it, not, not just the, the numbers, but just the call and response that we were getting. It was just overwhelming. Like, I was like, wow. I mean, Swiss was like, man, this, this is, and then, you know, we didn't want to believe this was a thing. Like, man, I think this is a thing. I don't know. Is it? Is it? And then, you know, and we got through a lot of hurdles and we was like, no, nah, this is real. This is, this is a fact. Because how yeah, I know how, how, how I felt, it made me feel, made me feel like energized for the whole day. Like, I didn't feel like I was on lockdown. Mm-hmm. Not at all. I, I I had my my uh my side was a little different because I because I came in very early on. I there was a Friday night when I saw Drake in there, and um it was like Drake and J Lo, and look I'm not listen you guys work with Drake you know what I'm saying like I didn't I didn't know Drake like that and once I saw my daughter hit me and she was like you know Drake is following you now he's just hanging out on your live and I was like all right that's cool and then I saw someone leave a comment that said. Oh my gosh, D Nice has everybody in here. The only people missing are the Obamas. So that was that Friday night before like that big Saturday night for me. The next morning I went, I got up and I was I called, I made the calls to people. I called the Obama people. I called the Joe Biden people. I called, I was calling everyone, trying to explain to them that there is a party going on, but it's on your phone. Like, <laughs> like there's something really happening that's dope and it's on the phone. And it didn't sound appealing to anyone. So later on that night, when they all started to come in, there were a couple of things that happened for me. One, we've all been of, of service for people for generations. You know what I mean? Like for decades, we've been of service, making music to make people happy. Very rarely do we ask people to, hey, can, you should come over here. Like, So that was my first time ever making calls like that because I felt like it was something different for people. And the fact that they all showed up was like, that's when I realized that it was something different for the culture and that we should, and we, the, all three of us should, should do what we can to protect that mm-hmm. and, and to, to keep it special. And I think, you know, a year and a half in, we've done a great job of doing it. Yeah, yeah absolutely have, absolutely. So between the pandemic and the murder of George Floyd, 2020 was a really tough year for the black community. Can you talk about what you think versus and club quarantine have meant to the black community in particular? I just think, I mean, mine is real simple. I just think it gave us light and hope. And it gave us, you know, passion and joy again. And then, you know, then we got knocked back down with George Floyd. And then, you know, God spoke again and we had the healing. And that mm-hmm. lift us back up again to go forward, to keep pushing forward. It was a tr- it was a trying year, but um, I think what we gave, me, D-Nice, Swiss, we gave hope and push forward, don't give up. I think we showed our community that we, we are very strong together, not apart. Mm-hmm. Yep. Facts. I, I agree. I, and also the other thing is, it was also the people because I remember when when uh, George Floyd when when that when the murder happened, um, and I went downstairs to protest, and the young kids were like, "You shouldn't be here. You should go back upstairs. You're playing music for us." And that I'm getting emotional thinking about that because mm. everyone has a role. You know what I mean? Like we weren't supposed to always be out there protesting. We were supposed to inspire them, and acknowledge them, and to keep them focused with the music that we played and with verses, like we gave everyone hope, you know, we gave people hope to stand in line to vote. Like, man, music saved lives, man. What we did was so special during during one of the darkest times, you know, it was a special thing that we, we created, we all created. I agree with that. I mean, Tim said it best and Nice said it best. I just feel like um, we gave people a place to run to. You know, we gave people a safe haven to run to whether it was running away from the news we've seen every day, whether it was running back in the house after endless hours of protesting outside, you know, we gave people that reset comfort hug and that zone uh, that they can depend on and still doing it to this day. Yep. I agree with you. I think that, you know, I mean, you inspired us, like you gave us 
like you motivated us at a time where, you know, I feel like we felt, our community felt just so beat down. Like we would come home and be able to gather together and celebrate, like turn on verses or tune in to club quarantine and we could forget about everything else that was going on in the world. And it like, we needed it. I truly believe that it was like, like God put y'all here to do this, right? Because like, but for the three of you, like what did our community have to really just connect to, or just to be, you know, motivated by, we were stuck in the house. You know what I mean? Like the world was coming to grips with racial injustice that we always knew existed, right? And so it just was so, like, it was so heavy and so much. And you just provide, like, you guys, like, this is going to sound dramatic, but I feel like you rose out of the ashes and, like, you know, as pillars of light and really just allowed our community to just kind of breathe and, 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 and celebrate and understand that, like, no, we're valuable. Like, like we're good. Like, we're going to be okay. We have each other and we will get through this together. And so I know from my family, I was telling, you know, D and Tim before you got on to us, like my family, like we tuned in religiously to um to mm. verses in club quarantine. And it just got us through so, you know, that we were able to laugh, we were able to joke at a time where nothing was funny. <laughs> like nothing, like there was nothing funny going on during that time, but we were just able to really like celebrate and laugh and joke and have a good time. And we were stuck in our homes where we connected via cell phone and would, would text back and forth and comment on what was going on on Versus or we would join in on club quarantine and, and just be there all night, like just commenting and cracking up. And it just, it truly got us through, like it true. And, and yeah. although we're not done, like, you know, like it, we're, we're, it's far, the pandemic is not done. like. We still have a lot of work to do with respect to just, you know, racial equality. Like, I just, I, I thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart because, you know, but for you, I don't know where the joy and the light would have come from. I mean, obviously, you know, my kids and, but, but just in the, the levity, the levity, like just the, the being able to connect with my family, even though we, we could not be physically together. Like you provided that for me and my family and so many other families. So thank you so much. This is awesome. Super, thank super you. welcome. Super welcome. And, and, and side note, Dean Nice, I appreciate you for that DMX tribute that you did as well. That was, that was super needed. And once again, you know, you you save the day with with with, with that energy, and and I, we all appreciate that um, yeah. from our side. I appreciate you, bro. You already know I love you, brothers. I'm I'm still trying to figure out how many screens Tim has, because when he leans up, you see like mad screens on his glasses. <laughs> Yo, sit with That's the wizard. The day, uh, 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 look at his it? look at his glasses. Yo, he's he's like, Max Hedrum, remember Max Hedrum? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, how many screens? I'm, look, I'm looking at the screens too. <laughs> so you've each lifted up so many millions of people with your music. Can you talk about a time in your life when music lifted you up? Music lift me up every day. I was gonna say every day. Like, every day music lift me up. It's, I'm always searching for a new sound or a new inspiration and just listening to, when I wake up in the morning hearing the birds make, make they sound, they making music. I'm like, wow. This is where Star Wars and all the sound effects came from, this nature. So to me, that's mm. every day is, is, is inspiration when I wake up. Every day, I can't, every day. But D-Nice, I think that you need to post your video, my name is D-Nice, on your page. Like, mm. I think you need to show people that this is not wow. something that you started today. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like the fact yeah. that you was with Boogie Down Production and all of the different things. I know you got a new hat on and a new life and we all are moving forward, but just throw the D-Nice video up on them. Yeah, pull them jars back, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. that's what I'm talking you know about. What I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, that D-Nice, <laughs> there you go. Nah, nah. You know what I'm saying? You know we just gotta see that, you know? Pull them jars out, pull them jars out, pull them, dust some jars I'll start, out. I'll start reminding people, I, you know, I'm having fun again, man. Like I spent so much time in the background you know, you know, it wasn't until now when it all came to the forefront, but I, I enjoyed being in the background, just planning events. But like now I do want to tell my story. I think it's a good story to share. Um, yes. So exactly. much has happened. You know, I've been in this music business from since 86, making records and, 
and then Facts. lost everything. They look the same. Lost everything. You know, I had to start all over again. I had to, you know, I, look, the funny thing is I'm sitting here with, with the two of you, two of my biggest websites. I don't even know if Tim realized that I was a web developer. Two of my biggest websites was Aaliyah's last site. I built that. I built the Black Round site. I built I built your site, Tim Lynn wow. and McGee's site. I built I built that. Coded everything. Like with a couple of my buddies and with, with Swizz, I I built the Alicia Keys Diary of Alicia Keys website. So it's like Crazy. creativity is everywhere around us, you know? Like so the way you hear like birds chirping and like and you hear the, the rhythm of it. That's how I feel about creativity as well. It doesn't just, it doesn't have to just be in like music. So, so like being in this business for all of those years and in these decades and to still love what we do and to still want to give people that energy is a special thing, man. Very special. Absolutely. And I just want to piggyback. My name is Dina. This is one of my favorite songs because you have a line in there that says, what? I live in the Bronx by the D and the four. And the four. I grew up on the concourse by the D and the four. So I was like, hey. like that, oh like that oh, okay. is all day, all day. Like you and I have been mentally connected before we even knew each other. And then wow. you became my brother. But like, to me, that just spoke to me from when I was young, young. So thank you, D. I for that. You. Put so the you video up for real nice. I'm telling no, you, bro. I am going to post that yeah. today. I'm about to, have, <laughs> about to have some fun posting some old things up. We're going to hold yeah. you to make sure you do it, D, because he's right. You need to remind people that you're not new to this started way back, yeah. way, way back. So you've all contributed so much to the music world and you've continually expanded into new ventures. What's next for Club Quarantine and Versus and for you in general? Um, for me with, with Club Quarantine, um, you know, I just started announcing the live dates. You know, I got my first live date coming up um, August 29th. Sold out the Hollywood Bowl. I have the oh, Ice yeah. Brothers on it, you know, to A. Marie and Carl Thomas. I try to mix it up the way that I play music, and you know, when I'm spinning live. Just announced Brooklyn Bowl. I mean, um, sorry, not Brooklyn Bowl, but um, um, Brooklyn Prospect Park. I mean, as soon as I announced it, first day sold like six thousand seats. There are like three thousand left, and we're just taking it on the road. And you know, leading up into a festival, I kind of just, you know, I don't want my life to just be club quarantine, uh, you know, because I, I do have so much history in this business, but I feel like people deserve to have this experience live because we did what? this together yes. you know, for one year. That's the only reason why I'm, I'm still using the name because I was like, I shortened it to just CQ and I woke up one morning when I did the deal with oh. Live Nation. I was like, Damn, what am I doing, man? I'm depriving people of what they know and what they they want to feel live, you know, and I got to give it to them that way. And surprisingly, like, you know, we did that deal and artists have been willing to jump on it and it's it's just great. So that's where I'm going with it. And, um, you know, I'll see where we go from there. Congratulations on that, too. I've seen that. Congratulations. Thank that's you, big. Yeah, because it's very important for people to know that with we both done, all of us, was not just for quarantine, it's for life. Yes. You know, and a lot of people, you know, okay, oh, that was something for quarantine. No, it started in quarantine, but you know, the greatness of celebrating music is a lifetime thing. And that's why I think that people need to understand like D Nice is not just for quarantine. Tim and Swiss and Versus is not just for quarantine. We started in quarantine, we got your attention in quarantine at a very needed time, but you must know that this must go on in, in a very big way. And we, 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 we would appreciate your support to keep that in mind as well. Don't just leave us in quarantine when the world is moving forward. No, we helped everyone in quarantine and you guys helped us, we helped you. And let's help each other move forward because all we're doing is promoting good music, timeless music and letting people know that music doesn't have an age limit. You see, like most of those records that y'all jamming to, that D Nice is playing is timeless music. Those artists that's on verses, those are timeless artists. And this is the bigger message is to promote timeless music and timeless artists, which is, you know, why this award is so important because ASCAP is a part of that as well. And um, it's very, this message is very important for people to hear. Like, don't just leave us in quarantine, come with us all over the world yes. uh, for many years. Big right. facts. That's right. So Tim and Swiss, I've read that you first had the idea for Verses in 2017. 
How did you envision it back then? And how did the concept evolve over the first few episodes? Back, I believe back then we, we was going to do albums and like verse versus albums and like go on tour and I pick five five or whatever how many artists he picked his artists we wouldn't know each artist and we was going to take it on the road we didn't have a clue that it would be digital and, and you know it's funny it's still on the road <laughs> you know what I'm saying but it's just in a different format yeah it's like things came to us say no 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 we're gonna go on the road but we're gonna go on the road digitally first mm -hmm. and then transition to being together yeah I agree with that okay D as a DJ in a live setting you can tell when the audience is feeling your song selections or not how did you adjust to having a virtual crowd um the way I adjusted was was uh based on hearts like when you see you know people tapping those hearts that's if you're tapping you see hearts flying for a while it's like people love that I mean you're not gonna tap the hearts if you're not feeling it and then also like just to, it was just really about paying attention to the numbers you know like if the numbers reach a certain number and they stay consistent like people can just swipe out of your joint and go to someone else's live but the fact that it would reach a number and stay there just meant to me that people were enjoying it yeah you know, like they were really enjoying it or on the comments and i do read the comments while i'm playing that's why some nights when i'm playing if it's a that's why I would always hate when like one of our friends, Roland Martin, would just come into my IG live and, and announce that someone that we've known has, you know, passed away. It's like you take on that emotion, you yeah. know, and it, like there are times when I'm playing music and then I'll see something like that. And it's like, you know, it's it's heavy. I could feel it, but I can also feel when the love is there, you know, like I can feel mm. that energy. So, I mean, it's go it's probably going to make it harder for me when we go full live again, because I'm so used to like seeing comments and acknowledging people so even a part of like my my live shows like the the bowl and everything i'm like i need screens where i can see names where people can just <laughs> put their names on the screen and i can still shout them out you know like i i got so used to to experiencing it that way and I, and, and 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 that's that was my way of staying connected with people so swiss and tim one of the many great things about versus is also how you were able to elevate some the behind the scenes folks like songwriters and producers can you talk to us a little bit about why that was important for you to do as well not just elevate the artists but also songwriters and producers i mean it's about time that people knew these writers that wrote these big songs and these producers that's behind the scenes like you know like with d nice he's been behind the scenes forever you know and it shouldn't take for a tragedy or something like that for these greats to get acknowledged and you know, me and Tim, we agreed to start with songwriters and producers because it told a great story of music. And, you know, when we put out the flyer with John Tay Austin and Neo, people thought it was a mismatch. It was like, how? Like, he should be going against this person and he should be going with that person. But then when they seen it, they it, it made sense. And then, you know, John Tay Austin starts getting all these phone calls about business and different people wanting to work with him because all of the great music he's done. For me, and Tim, you know, that was the biggest payoff was the educational part. And so um, so that's 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 the part that we love to keep going as well. OK, so, D, who are you most excited to see getting their virtual party on um, during club quarantine? Oh, uh, most excited. There are a couple of people, you know, like, I mean, obviously, Michelle Obama is always going to stand out as, as one of my favorite people. I just really, I just enjoy, you know, I appreciate her so much, you know, like always being supportive of what I'm doing um, and to somehow convince her that she didn't even have Instagram on her phone. That's how, like, <laughs> so like, I think that that would probably be the one, of the one of my favorites. But then also like, when I see like someone like Bobby Flay who has nothing to do with music that will be in there every morning whenever I was rocking and like jamming with us and talking to people. And I, I just, I just felt like what we were doing with music, we, we brought so many different communities together and different generations. Um, so those two may be like two of my top, but like, I just feel like anybody that came in to celebrate was just, they were all special. Just you didn't have to be there. This was free. You can go to someone else's live. But you yeah, man. You know, like, I think everybody is special. 
Yeah, it wasn't. For, for sure. Tim and Swiss, you're recognized as two of the all-time greatest producers. You've had countless huge records stretching back 25 years and more. What do you consider your greatest musical legacy? And where do you most clearly hear the impacts of your music today? Um, I think what we created versus <laughs> is, I think, our greatest impact on music because we get to showcase what we have done from here mm. on out into today. And um, mm. I think with me and Swiss, when we did the our live performance, you really, we really got to, we celebrated each other again. And mm -hmm. I had the same energy, like, man, my boy did a lot of records. Boy, well, he went to war, and he's a uh, vice versa. And, it, it, you know, I vice think, versa. <laughs> you know, I think that's the beauty of our career. We got to celebrate our career together. So, yeah, and I think that also the beauty of it is starting decades ago and being on this chat with you in 2021 is, is really powerful because it shows longevity and that goes for D-Nice as well. And, you know, it shows you that um, creativity, it, it, it never falls short if you're really putting your all into it. And I think having the freedom to be creative is very important, you know, um, and not be scared to be creative. A lot of people have great ideas and I tell them all the time, I said, just do it, go. As long as you have positive intentions, as long as you're not gonna hurt nobody with it, if it's creativity, go. And I, I just told my oldest son that the other day, I was like, man, you know, stop worrying about everything and everybody. Be, you know, build your own world and, and be true to that world. And those who wanna come to your party, treat them well. And those who don't wanna come to your party, treat them well, it's yeah. all good. You know, some people. Sometimes it takes people a long time to get around to things. Um, so, I think I think that um, the longevity part. I'm 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 ultra grateful for um, for being able to have for so long. Now we have some questions that were sent in earlier from some of our viewers. Chris LaDuke of Quincy, Massachusetts, wants to know what is the most important lesson you've learned from working with other artists in the music industry. Chris, what's up? What's up? Um, I think my experience that I've learned from working with other artists in the industry is that it depends on what your role is. Like as a producer, you know, you have to understand the artist, right? So if an artist is coming into the studio, for example, with low energy, high energy, might be going through something in a relationship, I would usually base the song on the energy of the artist. So I got thousands of things I could tell you, but one thing is just knowing the energy of the artist that you're working with in the studio. I think that's very key. Chris, how you doing? I got to agree with my brother Swiss. It's all about the energy of the artist. You know, that's that's how a producer creates off of the energy. And if the energy is low, our job is to pick the energy up sometimes, you know, with, with an artist and play play music that has a up vibe, you know, so but it's really based on the energy of, a, of the artist that you're working with. Hi, my name is Dylan Richmond, also known by my stage name as Dylan Walker. I'm in Van Nuys in Los Angeles, California. And I had a question for all three of you guys, Timbaland, Swizz Beats, and D-Nice. What do you think is the most important aspect of making it besides work ethic? You know, the most important component that you don't think is discussed enough or that you've, you've seen artists make it with that you've utilized yourself. I'm really curious on your guys' thoughts. I'm a songwriter, producer, and artist. And so there's all sorts of advice I feel like I could get and other people could get from this. You know, um, we'd just love to know what you think and thank you guys very much for doing this. Appreciate it. Hello, Dylan. Um, I think people should utilize, um, work ethic is very powerful, but people should utilize listening and paying attention. That's a great one. Very lis listening, studying, paying mm. attention. Great one. And 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 putting very smart people around you smarter than yourself to help you figure out solutions of a problem instead of you being Strong. emotional i should have had tim as my mentor come on oh, <laughs> I'm to tell oh, you. Tim? <laughs> no man just, wow, that was great boy got just... bars today boy <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> all right well larry atwater of brandywine maryland wants to know when using samples or loops, 
What's your process to make it your own? Larry, Larry, um, you how you make something of your own, just really like just don't take it and just be, all right, I got something that's already there. Like play with it, play around with it. Don't just settle, you know, just, mm-hmm. you know, go, go for it. Like make it sound different. Make the, the claimer be like, no, it ain't like, no, I think that's peace of mind. No, but it, I don't know. I'm unsure. It's just playing around with the sample to if you find something sweet about it, but mm-hmm. still keep mm-hmm. the essence of it there. Hi, my name is Nick and I'm a songwriter from Chicago. My question is for D-Nice. Music has been such an essential part of bringing families together during the pandemic. I know my nine-year-old daughter and I had lots of dance parties listening to Club Quarantine and she was introduced to so many great old school artists like Sister Sledge, so thank you for that. My question for you is how did music bring your family together at this time? So Nicole, um... Well, during the quarantine, well, early on in the quarantine, what, it, what with my family, it was my daughter was the person that would let me know who was in the room. So initially I had it set up differently. I was using my iPhone to stream, but then I would read text messages on my iPad and I'm a little older, so I need glasses. So when I was doing it that way, my daughter was the one that was actually saying, hey, dad, this person is in here. And it wasn't just based on like celebrity. It was based on familiar names, people that were returning, and we would just give everyone shout out. So it actually brought my daughter, my daughter's like 24 now, she started to love the music even more. So like she knows these songs and she, you know, now she knows who Melba Moore is, who she didn't know who Melba Moore was at all. You know what I mean? Like, so I feel like this time brought us a little bit closer together. I also kind of flipped it now. Like now I stream with my iPad, so I don't, uh, you know, I don't need anyone to help me out now. I got my glasses on right now, baby, so I can see y'all. I'm trying to be cool. Hey, me too. I got my glasses. That's why I get the cool glasses. <laughs> Jacqueline Cox of Los Angeles, California says, after a 15-year career as a female rapper, I embarked on a journey to become a producer. Can you tell us about a time when you made a life-altering decision for your future in music? Jacqueline, what's going on? This is Swiss. Congratulations on your years of perfecting your craft. Entering the producer world, I, I, I started off like a DJ. Well, I was a DJ, but I was gonna say like the nice, you know, and Timberland started as a DJ as well. So I think, you know, the game changing part was going from DJing where I had a big audience already, my mixtapes already what they were. I was DJing every club. It didn't make no sense for me to be a producer at the time when I did it. But then my family um, formed a label called Rough Riders, and I was the only person in my family that did music at the time. So um, they wanted they wanted me to help them out with that. So I'm like, wait a minute, I'm gonna leave all of this DJing money and go into producing because at that time they weren't. I wasn't looking up the producers. Like producers weren't popular like that, you know. Like before Tim, myself, Pharrell you know, a lot of other artists before, you know, started getting on records, like the producer was way in the back. And so, you know, I think the biggest thing was to believe in myself um, creatively to jump from being a producer into a world I didn't know much about as a producer. I was just making music for the beginning of my, um, the intros of my mixtapes. And then when I take the vocals out, that's a track. So I started selling more of the intros to my mixtape than my mixtapes. Like, Artists was coming like, man, I need, I need, um, I need a beat from for for my for the intro of my mixtape for somebody to rap on. So I was selling those more than I was selling my mixtapes, and then I realized that I was producing. And then, um, but the the bigger part is just believing yourself to take the jump and just treat everything serious and know that everything needs ten thousand hours. You need to put your ten thousand hours in, even though D Nice make it look simple. You know, he started in the eighties. Me and Tim started when we started, you know, so this is something that we've been working on for years. You know, Picasso could draw something in five minutes, but that took him 20 years to get that pen, that that, that paintbrush perfected. So just work on perfecting your craft. Yes. Yep. Okay, and our final question. Gabriel Valentino from Chicago, Illinois wants to know, how do you overcome self-doubt and self-criticism while you're creating? Hmm. Gabriel? They won. Gabriel, 
you always how you be, how do you overcome self doubt is um I mean I can't, it really no answer to that you just got to believe in yourself and just That's know that uh and you got to know is your biggest hater is yourself I believe I believe your mind talks to you so self doubt comes within and you just got to just tell yourself no nah, I got it and just keep pushing you just got to keep pushing some days it's gonna be harder than others. But you you'll see you'll see the end result. Trust me. You just gotta keep pushing. Yeah, plus plus in, in, your intuition is is strong, man. If it's something that you truly believe in, you know, I remember when I returned on the scene um as a DJ and our our, our brother who's no longer with us, I called him up two o'clock in the morning, Chris Lighty. And I was like, Bro, I went to I went to hear Q tip and Mark Ronson DJ. I had never heard people play that kind of music in like that sexy environment where you're playing everything, from James Brown to the records you guys produced. And I was like, man, I want to, I want a DJ. And no one would hire me. You know, I went to like every DJ that we know, like they were like, nah, you're old school. And I'm like, I'm not even making this up. I finally found a place that was gonna pay me $150. And at the time I was building websites, $150 to play for six hours. It was the best thing because I really believed that I was going to do something special. I just believed in it and it wasn't based on the money. That's the only reason why I can play 19 hours straight right now is because in those early days, I I did it for like no money, like nothing. And I just, you know, I just really believed. So you got to believe in yourself, man. And, and, and if that feeling is strong, you just got to go with it no matter how much money it is or, you know, if, if you feel like it's the right thing to do, then do it. Yeah, and to add on that, you know, a lot of people don't believe in themselves. So how did, how are they going to believe in you? You know, especially when you're doing something new. You know, so the key going back to what Tim said and what D said is to believe in yourself. But we also got to be patient with, with with the coach and with the people because a lot of people don't believe in themselves. You ask a person who they are, they really can't probably tell you. So you can't really go off of that. And it's not always personally aimed at you. And I had to learn that, you know, I didn't always have that advice. I was taking everything personal because I'm passionate and as creatives, we're all passionate as creatives. So the main thing is to listen to everything, but you're going to know when something connects to you and applies to you. And when that thing applies to you and it makes you feel good, that's the, that's the energy you leave with. Yes. Yes. Perfect, man. So perfect. So perfect. Swiss, Tim and D. Congratulations again for receiving the ASCAP 2021 Boys Culture Award. Yes. Put that X up, man. Put that <laughs> X up. Thank you three for enriching our lives during a time when we needed it the most. Thank you for being a part of the ASCAP family. And thank you for keeping the music flowing. We appreciate you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having us. Yes. Also to our audience, our viewers, tune in on Thursday, June 24th for our special club quarantine after party DJed by the Ooh. one and only 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We about to party and celebrate these gentlemen like they deserve to be celebrated. So tune in on June 24th for Ooh, our- That's fire. Yes. I can't wait.